Dropping in on Picasso by Pamela Geiger Stevens. Hello there, my name is Puffer, and I am on my way to the south of France to visit with the famous Spanish artist, Pablo Picasso. Mr. Picasso lives in a small village near the Mediterranean Sea. Hello, how's the soup? Slurp. Puffer politely tips his hat, loses his balance, and falls from the sky. Whoa! Flap, 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 flutter, flutter, flap. Watch out, heads up, look out below. Thump, crash, clang. What's that noise on my lawn? Mr. Picasso asks. Puffer has crash landed onto Mr. Picasso's bicycle. Pieces of the broken bicycle are on Puffer's head as he peeks into Mr. Picasso's studio window. Hello, Mr. Picasso. I am Puffer. You were expecting me, sir. Puffer, oh yes, the interviewer who is coming to see my artwork, Mr. Picasso replies. I wasn't expecting you to fall from the sky or to be so noisy. Please dust yourself off and come into my studio, invites Mr. Picasso. Thank you, that would be splendid. I'm very sorry about crashing in your bicycle, Mr. Picasso. Not to worry. I can easily put it together again, Mr. Picasso responds, as he looks at the bicycle parts in his hands. Then Mr. Picasso asks, I suppose that you are ready to learn about my life and artwork. I am ready. Good, exclaims Mr. Picasso. Let's start by looking at some photographs. Mr. Picasso opens a photograph album, points to a picture, and begins to tell about his life. I was born in Malaga, Spain. My father was an art teacher there. Maybe that is one reason why I became such a good artist, suggests Mr. Picasso. Art was always my favorite subject in school. I drew and drew and drew. Sometimes I drew when I should have been doing something else, Mr. Picasso laughs. When I was about 13 years old, my father asked me to help him finish a painting. My job was to paint the feet of some pigeons. After I finished the painting, my father knew that I was becoming a fine artist, Mr. Picasso says proudly. My parents soon sent me to art school. I was such a good artist that my teacher said that I could skip the beginner classes if I could pass a very difficult art test, explains Mr. Picasso. I was given only one month to finish the test, but I did not finish the test in one month. I finished the test in one day, Mr. Picasso chuckles. As I grew older, I began to visit art museums where I copied famous works of art. Soon, I knew that to become a famous artist, I had to move to Paris, France. Paris is where many modern artists lived and worked, says Mr. Picasso as he shuts the photograph album. Mr. Picasso sighs and continues to tell Puffer his story. I was a very young man when I first moved to Paris. I was lonely and didn't have much money. My mom was sad most of the time. It seemed that wherever I looked, other people were sad too. Because I was so unhappy, my paintings were unhappy too. My artwork showed people like me who were alone and very sad. To show these ideas, I mainly used cool colors, especially blue. I used so much blue paint during this time that it is called my blue period, Mr. Picasso says. When I became happier, the blue period came to an end. After that, I began to paint with warm colors. Would you like to see a warm color painting now, asks Mr. Picasso. Yes, please, I would like that very much. The title of this painting is Family of Salt and Beaks, says Mr. Picasso. This time in my life is called the Rose Period because I used so many warm colors, such as red and beige, in my paintings. 
The warm colors show a different kind of mood than cool colors. If you look at the people and the place in the painting, you will see what I mean. The people are circus performers who travel from town to town, Mr. Picasso adds. But Mr. Picasso, if these people are circus performers, where are the colorful circus tents? If I showed the circus tents, you would think about the fun of seeing a circus. By showing the people in an empty space, you get the idea that they feel as if they do not belong here. The warm colors add to this idea, replies Mr. Picasso. Do you know what some people think that the painting is not about circus performers at all? It has been said that I am the man who is dressed in blue and that the other people are my artist friends, said Mr. Picasso. This is what makes it art so interesting. The same painting can mean different things to different people. Exactly, exclaims Mr. Picasso. Now let's look at an art style that I helped to invent. This is a painting that I call Factory in, at Horta de Elbro. The style of this painting is called Cubism, says Mr. Picasso, as he shows a painting of buildings and trees. I helped to invent this style of art. What is cubism, Mr. Picasso? Cubism is a kind of modern art that does not copy nature, Mr. Picasso answers. Everything in the picture is made from geometric shapes. There are not many details or colors. If you tell me what you see in this picture, perhaps that will better explain cubism, Mr. Picasso suggests. The picture seems very flat. I think this is because there are not many details or colors. And look, it is difficult to see where one building stops and another one starts. It is almost as if I can see all sides of one building at the same time. That sometimes happens in cubism, Mr. Picasso explains. Now let's look at another kind of cubism that uses brighter colors. That would be splendid. This painting is titled Three Musicians. What do you see that is different about this kind of cubism? asks Mr. Picasso. The colors are much brighter and almost every object in the painting is made from triangles, rectangles, and polygons. The brightly colored shapes look almost as if you have cut them out and glued them onto the painting. Excellent, Mr. Picasso exclaims. Do you see the three musicians? Yes, I do. All three of them are facing us. The first is dressed in white. The second is dressed in red and yellow. And the third is dressed in black. Their clothes are very strange, Mr. Picasso. <laughs> that is because the musicians in this painting are actors who are wearing costumes and masks, Mr. Picasso explains. Now look at the feet and hands of the musicians, directs Mr. Picasso. Do they look real? The feet are just little boxes and the hands are much too small. But everything seems to fit together just right, says Puffer. Sometimes the objects in my paintings do not look real, but I always follow the rules for making good art, Mr. Picasso adds. Let's look at a portrait that I painted and you will see what I mean. I call this painting Portrait of Dora Maar, begins Mr. Picasso. What a curious painting, Mr. Picasso. What? Why do you say that it is curious? Mr. Picasso asks. Look at Dora Maar's face. She is looking in two directions at the same time. Her skin is yellow and green, and each of her eyes is a different color. Remember, my artwork does not always copy nature, says Mr. Picasso, but it does follow art rules. Look closely and you will see that the shape and colors in the painting fit perfectly together. Imagine a line down the middle of the painting, Mr. Picasso says. Do you see how the shapes and colors are repeated on each side of the picture? This makes the portrait balanced. Balance is an art rule that I have followed in this painting. 
The shapes and colors also lead our eyes around the picture so that we are always looking at Dora Mar, continues Picasso. I think I understand, Mr. Picasso. Artists must follow art rules, but they do not have to copy nature. When artists do not copy nature, their artwork is sometimes called abstract. Abstract? What is abstract, Mr. Picasso? Abstract art is kind of modern art. Good abstract art follows the rules of art making, but also shows ideas about art. Cubism is just one kind of abstract art, like you saw in some of the paintings I showed you this afternoon. Here, Puffer, take these sheets of paper and draw yourself using two different ways of making abstract art. Remembering what Mr. Picasso taught him, it doesn't take Puffer long to create two drawings. Mr. Picasso, look at my drawings. I think I understand what you have been telling me. Those are very good drawings, Puffer. The color and shapes do not copy nature and there are not many details. Now you have a hint about what abstract art can be. As Picasso and Puffer continue to talk about modern art, Puffer remembers another famous artist who lived and worked in Paris. Mr. Picasso, when you lived in Paris, did you know the famous French artist, Henri Matisse? Oh yes, when Henri and I first met, we did not like each other's artwork very much, says Mr. Picasso. Later, we became good friends. Now I think that Henri Matisse's artwork is the only art that is as good as mine. Henri and I have both used our studios as subjects for our paintings. Here, let me show you a painting of my studio, offers Mr. Picasso. That would be terrific. I call this painting the studio at Le California. It was created here in this very place, says Mr. Picasso. Some people think that this is more than a painting about my studio. It has been said that this is another of my self-portraits, Mr. Picasso adds. A self-portrait? How could that be? This isn't a picture of you, Mr. Picasso. You are right. I have not painted a picture of Picasso, but I have painted ideas about Picasso. Then Mr. Picasso explains, the objects in this painting tell about me. You can see where I work, what I like, and how I felt when the painting was made. That must be why you show two paintings on the floor and a blank painting on the easel. An artist would always have artwork and materials in the studio. You are right. Anyone who sees this painting gets a peek inside of my studio, but they also learn a little about Pablo Picasso, the world famous artist, boasts Mr. Picasso. Mr. Picasso picks up a newspaper and grumbles. Where is that photograph? Could I help you find something in the newspaper, Mr. Picasso? I want you to see a photograph of a sculpture that I designed for the city of Chicago. Mr. Picasso replies, it's in the newspaper somewhere. Where did you, when did you go to Chicago to make a sculpture, Mr. Picasso? I have never been to the United States, Mr. Picasso answers when he finds the photograph in the newspaper. I don't understand. How could you create a sculpture for a place you've never been? Let's look at the newspaper photograph and I'll try to explain, says Mr. Picasso. This is the sculpture that became known as the Chicago Picasso, Mr. Picasso begins. I never gave the sculpture a title. When I started this art project, I first drew my ideas about the sculpture and then made a small model in my studio. The model is about 42 inches tall. The finished sculpture is almost 50 feet tall and it weighs about 162 tons, says Mr. Picasso. My goodness, how could such a big sculpture be made? Many people in the United States work together to copy the little model and make it larger, Mr. Picasso replies. And then proudly adds, the sculpture was my gift to the city of Chicago. What a wonderful gift, Mr. Picasso. Could you tell me what the sculpture is about? 
Some people see a woman with long hair. Other people see a dog. Still other people see a cow's head. You can decide what you want to see. I never gave any hints about what it is. And that is what makes looking at art so much fun. There can be all sorts of right answers. An unusual clock hangs on the wall in Mr. Picasso's studio. The clock suddenly makes a loud noise. Gong, 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 bang, bring. I am not quite sure, Mr. Picasso, but I think it might be time for me to go now. Goodbye, Mr. Picasso. Thank you for sharing your artwork today. Mr. Picasso waves goodbye to Puffer. Adios, mi amigo. Goodbye, my friend. I hope to see you again soon.